Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the second video in a little set of videos I'm doing that shows you how to draft a really basic side topo. This is a little bit of road frontage in the rural area of Fair Oaks, Sacramento. And in the last video, you guys will remember we inserted our points, and then we drew our three uh, break lines, what we call three break lines, which are layered here. And so in this video, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and prepare the 2D drawing. We'll come back to the 3D drawing when we're ready to do our surface. But for now, we're gonna prepare the 2D drawing. Uh, we're gonna drop in some block symbols, and we are going to uh, do some trimming and some maybe a little hatching and a little faking. <laughs> faking, faking till we make it. Fake it till we make it. Um, so we don't want to make any changes to this 3D drawing because we're going to want to come back with these break lines to run our surface. And I'll, we'll do a video that shows how to do that. So I, I already saved it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call it, uh, I'm going to call it 2D Topo version 1. Okay, and what I can do now is I can select one of these polylines and I can say uh, select similar and you can see it'll grab all the polylines on that layer. So I'm just going to do that a few times. So I could I could do that to go through and select the other uh, polylines, but let me show you another uh, quicker way to do that. If we just come in, I want to select all my lines but not my points. I notice here I have a problem with my layer name. Let me fix that real quick. So what I can do if I want is in my layer manager, I can I can collect, uh, what I want to do is I want to just freeze this points layer right here. Okay, so now only the line layers are selected. You can see those points have gone away, which is cool because I can just window select these, okay? And we're going to run a command called flatten. So I'm just going to type in flatten. I apologize. I don't know where it is in the menu. And it's going to say, do you want to remove hidden lines? I always say no. Okay, and now if we click any of these lines, you can see they are all converted to uh, polylines now instead of 3D polylines. Nope, they aren't. That's a 3D polyline still, but they're all flat. So let's go ahead and uh, let's select these again. We want to convert those 3D polylines to polylines. So you can see right here in the properties dialog, it tells us that we have uh, 14 items. What you can do now is you can use this box to filter. So I don't want to explode the polylines because that'll make them just lines. I want to leave them as polylines. But I, I do want to explode the 3D polylines into polylines. So I'm going to grab those 3D polylines. And now I'm just going to say X for explode. And now when I click on that, it's a, it's a line. Actually, you know what? There's a better way to do that. So I'm going to hit the undo because I don't want all those individual line segments. I'm going to keep undoing for a minute. So let's see here. So actually what we want to do is uh, we want to select these 3D polylines, but we got to do it a little different. So I'm going to say, uh, right, I'm going to left click to select a, a line there, and then I'm going to right click and go down to quick select on the pop-up menu. And I want to say, um, I want to select uh, 3D polylines. Just want to select all 3D polylines. I don't know if this is going to work. Select all. That's what we want. And then we'll hit OK. And it didn't work. I don't know why. Let's try it one more time. Just for fun. Uh, quick select. We want to apply to the current selection. Nope. We, you know, no. Nope. So we want entire drawing. We want entire drawing. We want it to be, we want to select all and we want to include in a new selection set and then said, okay. All right. So it just selected all the 3D polylines. No, nope, it didn't. It grabbed all the lines. Why is it doing that? Let's try it one more time. Quick select entire drawing. Object types. We want 3D polyline. We want to select all, and we want to include a new selection set. All right, that's what I wanted. So now we just have the 3D polylines. If you go to the grading menu in Civil 3D, to the polyline utilities, there's this convert 3D to 2D polylines. That's what we want. We're going to click that. So now you can see it's a polyline at elevation 0 and 
uh, we still have all the segments glued together in a polyline. So that's what we wanted. All right. So that's done now. So we flattened our lines. We can go ahead and turn our points back on. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and drop in a few symbols. We only have a few. Let's turn this back up so we can see these. So I know I've got a water valve and a fire hydrant. So most companies will have a, what's called a block library. So we're going to run the insert command. Okay, or you can just come up here to your menu and say insert block. A block is like a little set of drawing entities, lines and points and text uh, that you can move as a group, as a unit. So we're going to browse to the Gaida surveying block library, and we're going to find our water valve block, I hope. Here it is, water valve. That's what it looks like. We're going to say open, and we are going to say... We want to specify the insertion point on screen. That's where it drops in. And But the scale, I think this is going to end up being a, a, a drawing at 1 inch equals 10 feet. So I'm going to make that 10, and we're going to insert. And we might have to play around with the size on this a little bit. We'll see. Oh, now it's asking me. So let's try 10. Okay, so it at, at, looks like it's the right size for a 1 to 10. So we're going to grab it. And we're going to snap. This is the insert snap, those kind of double diamonds. So the insert, um, you can define an insert point when you make a block. It's just like a user-defined grab point. And uh, we're just going to put it on top of the valve with the node snap, okay? So when we're all done with the topo, we're going to freeze these points. You won't see them. But what you will see there, let's just do, let's show you. Freeze this layer. Um, you will see the symbol, okay? The engineer will see the symbol when he looks at the topo, or she. Okay, so now we need to do one for the fire hydrant. So we'll go through the same process. Insert block. Browse. We're going to go find the guide of fire hydrant. No, nope, fire ring, fire hydrant. And we'll say open. And we want to scale up by 10. And we're going to insert. Now, sometimes when you do this, if these blocks aren't set up right, the block comes in way over here. It's because we work in state plane coordinates and we need to clean up some of our blocks. So I will make sure I get that done. So anyways, we're going to zoom in now and grab this guy and zoom way back out and come down here to where our topo's at. And the reason that happens is AutoCAD has like an infinite canvas. And so we run a little region there. So uh, you got to be careful because sometimes stuff ends up way out in the boot docks. All right, so I'm going to grab my fire hydrant now from the insert, just like we did the water valve. I'm going to drop it on the point. So now we got our fire hydrant. And we don't have a lot more in here. I think we got one manhole I saw. Manhole here of unknown type. So let's drop on our manhole block. We probably have an unknown manhole block. We do because Gaida is awesome. All right, hit OK. And there's our manhole block. You guys like those all those sound effects I make with my finger and my tongue, I know. All right, cool. So I think that's all the symbols we need. And uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to clean up some line work. Okay, so for example, I know there's a concrete driveway here that I need to stub out. So I'm going to make a new line, new layer. We're going to call it lines driveway and we'll give that a color make it yellow set it to current set that layer current and I'm gonna draw a couple lines here I'm gonna start them over here I'm gonna use type in PER for perpendicular snap you can see that symbol there it's got a little 90 degree angle so now this line was drawn perpendicular to this line which is what I wanted and we're just gonna move this driveway line up with the move command then I'm going to type the copy command because I want to copy a parallel line down from this endpoint to that endpoint. So we just kind of stubbed in that driveway. Okay. Uh, this is a little funky now. I know this point right here is probably a bad point because I was, uh, this one because I was shooting reflectorless. So I'm actually going to pull this out and delete that point. It was a real shallow angle and I just caught a leave or something. 
And uh, we can kind of fake this in a little bit too, this little edge of the driveway here. By the way, if you're brand new dry, uh, drafter, do not do this. Do not fake line work in. You should only do this if you're an old pro because it's dangerous. So if you're an old fart like me, you can fake in line work sometimes. All right, so we got that new driveway in. Now, I also know over here that uh, I'm missing some so uh, some points on the edge of pavement. So I actually know that my pavement kind of um, comes across here as like an apron. So I'm going to go ahead and fake that in too. See, it's grabbing that snap. If if you, I don't want it to snap down here to this point. So what you do, you can type in N O N when you've got a, a command active like that, and it will ignore the snap settings. I don't want to do that again. I'm just faking in this line where I know the pavement goes. And the reason I know is because I was there doing the topo. And uh, if I was a good field surveyor, I would have got a few more shots. Now I drew that on the wrong layer. It's on the driveway layer. So let me show you this little tool. It's so another way to change the layer. It's called match properties. Click on the layer you uh, a line that's on the layer you want, and then click on the layer you, the line that you want to change, and it'll match the properties. Now you got to be careful with that. Sometimes it'll do things other than the layer, uh, but for lines it works. It works good for layers. All right, there isn't a whole lot more I want to do here. I'm pretty happy with that line work. Okay, now I do want to add some trees. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I have some trees here. This is the uh, diameter in inches in the drip line. And I'm just, uh, let's see if Gaida's got a good tree block. Let's take a look. Oh, I typed Gaida. Let's go insert. I don't think I like Gaida's tree block. I think it's kind of ugly. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it's up to snuff. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm feeling the tree. We're going to go ahead and use it. So we'll drop the we'll drop the tree in there. I think it's kind of ugly, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Don't tell Ralph. I think his tree block is ugly. All right. AutoCAD's hanging a little bit. It just takes a minute. I'm working off a remote server, so sometimes AutoCAD will hang when you're doing stuff related to the files. And my tree block came in way over here to the side again. So we gotta pull this in. And we might have just crashed AutoCAD. So I'm gonna pause this video and hope that AutoCAD doesn't crash on me because I haven't been saving regularly. All right guys, sorry about that. So good news, AutoCAD did not crash. By the way, save regularly because AutoCAD crashes a lot. And uh, so I got my tree symbol in here, but I didn't quite get it in the right spot. So we're going to use the move command, and we're going to try and get it down here in the right spot. And one of the reasons AutoCAD's running slowly is because I got this screen recorder going at the same time. So they're both fairly heavy processes for the computer. All right, so I got this tree in. I'm going to go ahead and move it. All right. It doesn't like that insert snap, so let's try CEN for center snap. Okay, that'll give me the center of the trunk, and I'm just going to drop it over this tree shot. Okay. Now, what this is telling me is it's a 7-inch trunk with a 19-foot drip. We're going to use the DI for distance command to just get a rough distance here. So this is uh, one feet across, okay, roughly. So we need to scale this up by roughly 19 feet. Okay, first I'm going to make a copy of it because I want to keep it at roughly one foot across. And then we'll type uh, S-C-A-L-E or S-C for the scale command. We're going to select this. We want to scale it from the center, from the node. And then we're going to just say, because it's a foot, I want to scale it up by 19 to get 19 feet. Okay, there's the life size of the tree with the drip. And we're going to do that again. So we got another tree here. We're going to run the copy command. We're going to make some copies of this one foot tree here. We got a tree here. 
Looks like we got a tree here. I know there were several trees. There's a tree here. There's a tree here. There's a tree here. I think there's a couple trees back here in the back. Yeah. That's a tree. That might be it. All right, so now we're just gonna go in and scale these so they're the right diameter. So this one needs to get scaled up by nine. It's got a nine foot drip. You can see some of those trees are gonna overlap. That's okay. This one's got a 32 foot drip. That's a big tree. This one's got a 16 foot drip. And this one's got a 17 foot drip. So you guys can't see it. I'm just hitting the space bar to rerun the scale command. Picking that insert point, that, that node, and just typing in the number for my scale factor, eight feet on that one. Okay, I know that's not a one foot tree. I remember this is a big tree. So the field guy goofed there. He didn't get a good, he didn't get a diameter, or trunk diameter or drip diameter on that one. So uh, that's at least a 25 foot tree. Okay, and then this one in the back, we gotta pull this up so we can read it. So that's 21 feet, it's a big tree too. So we got some big oak trees out here. All right. <clears throat> so trees are done. Uh, we faked in a driveway here. We faked in a little bit of the edge of pavement here. Faked in a little bit of the driveway there. I think that all looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. We're at almost 20 minutes. We're going to save it. I'm probably going to turn those trees off for now because they're, they're a little much. Oh, and you know what? I've got them on the edge of pavement layer. So let's make a new layer. Oh, I didn't layer any of my blocks. That's that's way bad. That's like that's a that's a crime deserving of capital punishment in the cab in the CAD world. So we're gonna um, make a new layer. I'm gonna call it block blocks trees. Okay, and we had another one. We had blocks water valve water valves. And we're going to say blocks, utility, manholes, and one more, blocks, fire hydrants. So those all should have been on their own layer. I'm going to leave them the same color for now, uh, except for the trees. We're just going to make it pretty green for now. So I'm going to left-click on this, say select similar. That grabs all my trees. I'm gonna sit, hit the layer here and drop, uh, move them up to block trees. You can see they, okay, they're on that layer now. If I click on them, and uh, this one we're gonna where it's uh, we're gonna put it on the. Uh, let's see, that's the fire hydrant. So blocks fire hydrant. This is the water valve. So it's gonna go on blocks water valve, and there should be a manhole. We're going to put this on the blocks utility manhole layer. Okay, so we've got everything layered right. Now, the reason that's important is now we can go in and turn those trees off for now because they're, they're a lot. All right, we're going to save this drawing. And what I'm going to do in the next video, we're going to go in and I think we're going to... Hmm. We'll probably add some hatching in the next video. And then we'll do, we'll do some hardscape grade labels. Um, and the, the only thing that we should really have to do after that is run the surface. Okay? So I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you catch the next video in the set. We'll go in and we'll do our hatching. And we will uh, we'll do our hatching and we'll add some grade labels. All right. Cool.